guys, Nathan at Duck River Honey, and today we're going to be doing some chores. So, I've got a lot of swarm trap platforms that I need to get made. Um, I'm going to be putting together the cables and chains for those, and then hopefully get some of those assembled. I'll probably run out of hinges before I run out of the other parts, so I may have to pick some up. Pick. I can't speak today. I may have to pick some more of those up at the hardware store. Um, I've also got a, an old dolly that... Um, it's a really nice dolly, but um, one of the tires won't stay inflated. It's flat every time I use it, and I'm planning on using that for moving supers and stuff. So I got some uh, solid tires. I'm going to try to get those um, switched out. It looks like the cotter pins are going to be a little difficult, so we'll see how that goes. I also need to get some spacers made for my swarm traps. I've got weather today that I will be able to glue. It's going to be over 47 degrees Fahrenheit. And I've, I've got to get the spacers made before I get all my supers and everything painted. And when I paint, I've got to have the weather to do that. And looking at the forecast, and if I started today, which I'm not ready to start today, I don't have my racks and stuff built. I could probably get it done tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, maybe, if everything went well. But then it's gonna be really cold. We're gonna have a cold snap come in. Uh, we'll have highs struggling to get to 30, uh, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And one day the highs in the low 20s, maybe even teens, and it'll be single digits at night. So um, that doesn't leave me a lot of wiggle room on the painting and I'd much rather wait until it's going to be consistently in the 50s or 60s uh, for a couple weeks in case uh, this oil-based primer that uh, I'm using doesn't want to dry quickly. Um, that'll give it some time to air out if I need to. So that's kind of what I've got going on and uh, we'll get to it. That's more what I expected, the head broke off of it. That's how things usually seem to go for, with me, taking these old things apart and trying to fix it. Seems like it always wants to break. Well, that's not going to work. Mm -mm. That's not going to work. Got the wrong hub on that. I'll have to take better pictures, send this back, and get a different style. Making the cables for the swarm trap platforms is not difficult at all. inch aircraft cable here that I already had. And I'm very, very carefully measuring out roughly six feet. And this is the important part. Use actual cable cutters to cut this stuff. You can cut it with uh, bolt cutters, but it frays the ends. And it makes it really hard to get a ferrule on. Tired. 
funny, these are smaller, but they were sharp. Guys, this is what happens when you turn your uh, cable and chain toolbox over and mix it with some spilled chainsaw bar oil. You end up with a Ziploc bag full of mixed parts. <laughs> oh man. So all I'm doing is I'm taking about six foot of cable here. I'll stick a ferrule on, I don't know, that's 12 inches of chain. Come through that. Then I'll get my engineer's hammer, which is not in here. That's all I need for now. I've got to have the platform built before I get the rest of it done. So I'm going to try to make a few of these. My chickens are excited, I think, when I'm just laying egg. Whenever I use this, it always reminds me of a quote, and uh, I've been trying to remember what it is exactly. And I may not, I may not have this exact, but it's a good one. It's I think it's by Edwin Markham, who was the poet laureate of Oregon in the 1920s, 1930s, and he said, "For all your days, be prepared and meet them ever alike." When you are the anvil, bear. When you are the hammer, strike. Think about that a lot. It's like we have good times and bad times in life and uh, sometimes it seems like the world's jumping on our backs and sometimes it seems like you can do no wrong. So. No matter what's going on in life, be the same person. I like that. Using recycled boards here, and they've all got nails in them. I've got to pull them. And I'm trying to figure out an easy way to do that. So these boards are random length. They uh, they were actually cut out of a deck. So this one's a little under two foot. This one is 25 inches. Some of the shorter ones are 20 and a half. Doesn't really matter. So this is what we're after. This bottom board needs to be at least somewhere around that. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to support most of the bottom board. Here's where you can adjust this if you need to. 
So basically, what I want to happen is I want to be able to set this thing back at an angle in case the tree's leaning backwards and still have the chain reach. But I also want to be able to set it forward at an angle of about like that and still have the, still have the cable reach. So I'm using the quick link to uh, adjust it. So I like that. I like that right there pretty well. So just set that on there. Grab the anvil. We're going to Edwin Markham it. Alright, now... Alright, so now I've got a pile of washers and an S-hook. So I'm going to take one end of the S-hook and close it. Take a quick clean, put it in the other end of the S hook, facing out, and close this. I'm going to take a two and a half inch deck screw, put a small washer on it. Put a big washer on it, stick that through the S hook where the opening is facing out, and screw that into the edge of this. I don't recommend twist link chain for use with these quick links. It works, but it's not fun to use. Straight link chain would be better, just a machine chain or even a twist, just a twist link. The cheap stuff would work fine for this as long as it's big enough. So what that allows me to do is I just made a platform that if the tree's leaning back and I need to face the storm trap this way, I can match the tree's lean and level the box. And same deal with the tree is leaning forward quite a bit. I just bypass the chain hook directly to the cable. I'm not gonna lie, a lot of the design of, of this is uh, not what I think is best for the application. It's what I think is best for the free materials that I have to recycle. Um, so use your own ingenuity. Uh, the platform is the key. The platform and the bait hive and the spacer system are the are the key to the uh, to the swarm traps I'm using this year. If you haven't seen the video on that, then I'll link to it. Um, it's well worth a watch. So I just need to get a few more of these made. All right, guys. So I'm out of recycled lumber. I've got to go to the old shed and dig some more out before I can make any more of these. So I'll do that in a little bit. That may not be on camera. So I want to uh, show you how I'm making the spacers for my swarm traps, and that's really simple. Um, the two long pieces are 19 and 7 8. The two short sides have got to be 16 and a quarter. And then uh, I'm using a a dado stack to cut a 3 8 by 3 8 uh, rabbit in the ends and then putting them together. So uh, let's take a look at how I'm doing that.
make these swarm trap spacers as I am to make my supers because it works. It just works really well. These rabbit joints are pretty easy to put glue on. Just put it right on the corner and it'll squeeze down onto the end grain and the long grain. I'm not super worried with how well these are put together, to be very honest. Because they're just a spacer. I'm primarily using them for swarm traps, so they'll be used three months of the year and then put up. Pulling a lot of nails, this thing is super handy. It's uh, not expensive. Basically, what it does is you've got these pinchers with this lever that closes. So you come in at an angle, and even if the head of the nail is below the wood, you can drive these pinchers down, grab the head, and pull it out. can get enough leverage with these to pull the pull the head of the nail through the wood. It may break it, but it's free wood anyway. Good grief, have you guys seen lumber prices? I'll throw this up on the screen. I'll show you how you can check lumber prices really quickly. Basically what you do is you go to Google, you search current lumber prices, Scroll down to uh, find a chart of the spot price of lumber. And if you look at the maximum date range, it'll take you back to about 20, 2005, so cover about 15, 15 years, depending on which chart you look at. And the average price, spot price of lumber, has been in the probably the 350, 375 range. Goodness, I looked the other day and it was... 826 had been as high as 872. Uh, it's just, it's ridiculous. You know, that really hurts beekeepers because there's there's not a ton of money in beekeeping anyway, and woodenware is a pretty major cost. So that, that really hurts, uh, you know, that really drives up the cost of trying to expand an apiary operation when you're talking about lumber being twice or two and a half times as expensive as, as it has been over the 15 year average. It's uh, it makes this sort of stuff pay a lot better. coming to the end of this. But this is a good use for these. Been it's hard to find a use for short boards like that, but this is a where you reuse them.
I would not have done that without this tool. Um, I forget where I bought this, but if I can find a link to it, then I'll leave it below. It, uh, these are all twisted nails, so they don't come out easy, and that thing makes pretty short work of them. See how many there are. Alright guys, I think that's going to be it for today. Um, I've got more work to do. I've got quite a bit more work to do, but uh, I'm just going to try to stop the video and then work and just get done with it. The video takes a lot more time than it does if you just work without shooting video. Uh, so I've got a pile of wood here. I've got to make a bunch more platforms. I need to get about, uh, I don't know, 18 or 20 of those made. I wouldn't mind having even more than that if the opportunity arri arises. Um, if you're doing swarm traps, you may as well do quite a bit. You know, if you're running a, a loop and getting the landowner permission, you may as well run a bunch of them. Spacers, I've got, uh, I don't know how much wood I've got. I'll have to look. I'm gonna have to rip some stuff down or use some two by threes or two by fours scraps. Um, I don't want to buy any lumber with it as, as expensive as it is, so I'm trying to reuse anything I can find, but uh, I'm running out of scraps, so I may actually have to buy some. It, it would make it easier to buy them anyway. They'd all be uniform instead of having to rip them first. So, guys, I appreciate you watching. If you would, then please hit the like button. That helps get the video out to other beekeepers. Helps my channel out. I'm trying to grow and... Uh, you know, actually make this into a thing. While you're at it, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Uh, that'll let you know when I post new videos. You can follow along this whole year. This is going to be a series. I've got, a, you know, I've got a bunch of stuff planned, and a lot of it's going to take a long time to work out. Um, so this this entire year, I'm building for next year in my YouTube channel. There will be videos in series that I sh have already shot that will be the last video in the series. Um, so I've, I've got a lot of plans. It'll be interesting to see how they work out, uh, whether it's good or bad. So I appreciate you watching, guys, and until next time.